Hello, everyone. Well, I would say hello, everyone, but there's no one here but you and me, Yuki. <laughs> <laughs> it's <a> me. <laughs> hello, you. Hello. Hello, teacher. <laughs> uh, don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. Okay, I did my introduction, so there we go. We're here with me and you and my cat who's sleeping here. Do you see him? He's sleeping down there. Can't really see him that well. Can you see the cat? Uh, yes, I can see. Let's see. There yes. he is. Oh, cat. Oh, she. I don't want to. I don't want to disturb him too much. Well, let's disturb he him. He doesn't see me. He doesn't uh, see me. <laughs> he turned back. Oh wait, we got we got some viewers, Yuki. Okay, we can start the class now. We have some viewers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think this will be a. Let me get my name on the screen. Hang on one second. I think this will be an interesting. What, what is his name? What is uh, the cat is Levy. Levy. Uh -huh. oh, good name. I didn't name him. My wife named him. Oh, Her it, it's even wife's name. No, no, no. It's not my wife's oh. name. <laughs> <laughs> that would mean that she's a Jewish man. No, no, no. It's the she's the one who named the cat. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's see if he looks like a Levy. Well, he's not. She's not showing his face. Levy, beautiful name. You oh wait, Carmen's here. Carmen's here. Good sense. Of course she does. Yes. Carmen, I'm just showing you my cat. Beautiful cat. And now that we've got people, we can begin. Did you see my cat, Carmen? Yes, I did. Cute one. <laughs> he's he's being Very shy. Cute. He's being shy. He's not facing the camera. Later <laughs> on, when he wakes up. Okay, hello, um, everybody. Let's see who else we have. David, how are you, David? Hello, teacher. I am good. Thank David, you. is uh -huh. this the first time? <laughs> With you? Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. He's showing his face. This is my cat, David. Can you see him? <laughs> oh, yes. How is the name? David. <laughs> this is this is Levy oh. the cat. Levy. The cat. Hello, Levy. Oh, look, he's biting me. <laughs> uh, David, in sure. this class... Yes, we're go we're going to discuss a short story um, that we read. We we ran out of time in the last class, so we're going to be discussing the short story. If if you haven't read the short story, it's going to be a little difficult to participate in the discussion. Did you have a chance to read it or listen to it at the? Um, there's a link in the description of the class for a podcast. Mm -hmm. And a t and a text. Did you have a chance to listen to it or read it at all? No, no, but uh, don't don't, go, don't no 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 problem. Okay, okay. Well, look, if you this want the link, the last class of reading classes, so yeah, maybe you don't understand what is going on. It could be difficult. David, where are you from? From Colombia, teacher. From Colombia. Okay. Uh -huh. David, there is the link to the podcast so later on you can listen to the story if you want and here the second link is a link to the whoops hold on I'm gonna give you a link to the text as well give me just a second uh -huh. uh, hold on let's see if I can do this oh you know what give me a second here I have to copy the link from another place give me just a minute Hang on one second. Okay, so if you take a look in the chat window, here is a copy. Here's the link to the actual text. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're we're only going to refer to the text. We're not actually going to do the reading. And if you want, when you open the link to the text, you'll see this logo, the lottery by Shirley Jackson. That's how you know you're in the right place. Okay. Okay. So. Let's get started. Um, I think at the bottom of this document, I gave you a few discussion questions, and we might want to start there. Um, yeah, we might want to start there at the discussion questions, and then there's some other things I can bring into the discussion that are not really part of the analysis. Um, but, Carmen, I can't remember. You Did you have a chance to read the story as well? I don't think you were in the class. No, I was not in the class, but I had a chance to read it. Ah, okay, So great. I read it. I read it. Excellent. So, 
why don't we start with some of these discussion questions and then we'll go on from there, okay? So the first one, were you surprised by the ending of the story? <laughs> I, I read it again and I, I, again, I surprised that that uh, yes, it is a shocking ending, of course. But I, uh, at the same time, I feel the uh, um, humor uh, everywhere in this story. <laughs> it leads to the tra tragedy, but uh, every it is surprising that every um, um, there are many humorous moments. Mm -hmm. And and some kind of humanity. I feel that some kind of humanity among uh, villagers. It is very interesting. Uh, so, it wasn't a total surprise. Yes. I mean, when you point, you know, <clears throat> when we were reading, in the second or third paragraph, when you pointed out, um, it's you pointed out that it seems strange that the children were picking up stones. That's you know, it. Mm -hmm. it. You know, <clears throat> it didn't even occur to me that that was strange. Uh, only when you said it, and then I, that was you, Yuki. You said, uh, they must be picking up stones for a reason or something like that. I just figured that it was normal activity that kids do. They pick up stones and they throw mm -hmm. them, whatever. But, yeah, but it, it surprised me too, and I was wondering what they wanted the stones for. Right. You know, <laughs> when, I, when, I, you know when I read it first time, and they they say well, they were picking up stones, you know, the 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 rounders and the sort of thing. I said, what are they doing? But I think, but but I thought it was just uh, that we're going to to uh, to go for a fight. I mean, just the boy, right? right? I didn't expect it was for to stun something to death. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, what about that then? So the ending of the story is a public stoning, and uh, were you? I mean. Were you expecting something different? I mean, did you know that that's what was going to happen at that point? No, because it was a lottery game, so I thought it was just uh, they were just going to it was going to be a draw, and they were some, some some someone was going to turn some money. I didn't expect it at all. What I'll just reiterate one point uh, that I made when when I was reading the ending. Um, <clears throat> this is what I find shocking. In the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. Give me a second here. No, the, well, oh, there's almost oh, the last page on page 12. Mm -hmm. The description is the children had stones already, and someone gave little Davy Hutchinson a few pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> what that, did that spend? That that's that's the most shocking moment of the story to me, because they are so kind and considerate that this whatever he is, eight-year-old boy, can't pick up a heavy stone. To kill his mother, right? Mm -hmm. It's his mother. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Finally, uh, he he joined the the ceremony, uh, killing his fa his mother. Yeah. Yeah. And it is quite uh, ironical that the, the weapons, yeah, it, that stone, uh, it uh, is gathered by children. <laughs> That's true. It's yeah. That's yeah. true. And what what do you think that means in a larger sense? This metaphor. I'm saying, don't you think? For me, that stands out as a metaphor. It's it, it's true. That's a good point. It's the children who are gathering the stones. Maybe in the description they might say something else, but the only thing I remember is that it's children gathering the stones. Mm -hmm. That that seems to stand out for me. What do you think, Ahmed? What do you think about possible symbolism there? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, uh, in the story, there's, uh, in one of the lines, uh, there is something mentioned about teachers or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I thought that, uh, for example, uh, those children or this, those kids are following their teachers. Mm -hmm. I mean, the teachers did something, so they have to uh, like uh, follow. Right, 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 yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Actually, let's see if we can find that. Hold on a second. If I do a quick search for teacher, was there the, a teacher? In the beginning of the story, it, it, it's describing them coming together after school, and it says um, <coughs> uh, they broke. They oh, broke yeah. in, 
broken to holiday, uh, holiday. A vacation began, just, just began, right. and uh, children gather together and talking about their children, uh, teachers, uh, and the classes, and what is scored by teacher. Mm -hmm. so, but right, does so, it have anything to do with the stunning itself? Yeah, that's what I was going to get yes, at. So, because so. it says here, Bobby Martin had already stuffed his pockets for the mm -hmm. stones, and the other boys soon followed his example. Yeah, but what about the teachers? There's no teacher in there. Uh, okay, before that, uh, let me read here. It says, uh, okay, uh, and their talk was still of the, of the classroom and the teacher. But just because they had just begun the, the vacation. Yeah, hasn't appeared. Just uh, they talking. Uh, they, are, uh, they were talking about the teacher. Mm -hmm. okay. The school I, I was thought... recently over for the summer, and mm -hmm. the feeling of liberty sat un, uneasily. The, of, um, for most of them, most of the children, yeah, they tend to get. A, yeah, I uh, thought. I yes. thought Bobby Martin mm -hmm. is one of teachers. No, That's but why. no, no, but, no, 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 no. But but hold on a second. Who's his father? Who's Bobby Martin's father? Who's Mr. Hutchinson? Martin? Hutchinson? No, no. Who is Bobby Bobby Martin? He's got a father in the story, doesn't he? Mr. Mm -hmm. Martin, okay. right? Mr. Martin and his oldest son, Baxter, came forward to hold the box on the stool while Mr. Summers stirred up the papers inside of it. Mm -hmm. So, so Ahmed, you might have a point, actually. Uh, who is Mr. Martin? Because... Maybe you're right. Look, all the kids are following Bobby Martin's lead, right? He's like the big guy, and they all do what he says. Mm -hmm. Who is he? Who is he following? Well, he's probably following his father, right? Or, or he's following his older brother Baxter, who's following Baxter, his father. Baxter, that's it. Baxter, yeah. So the yeah, question that's... is, who is Bobby Mar Who is who's his father? Well, it's we know we, we know who his father is. His father is the guy who keeps the box when they're not mm -hmm. using it. Remember, they kept it in the grocery store, which belongs mm -hmm. to Mr. Martin. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm trying to say is, doing a close reading of the text is uh, is often revealing. <laughs> Maybe there's some hidden something hidden there because oh. it's descri it's described that one year. Okay, it's true, the box goes around to different people. But it does stop on the shelf of the grocery store, the Martin grocery his store. His father keeps a grocery, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And, it, and his father is well, part of the ceremony? Uh, put uh, uh, in front of, uh, uh, before, uh, just before the ceremony, once a uh, 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 black box uh, has been set, uh, set, put on the shelf in the Martin's mm -hmm. grocery. Right. So, so what I'm saying is, even if Bobby Martin isn't a teacher, that's still it's still something worth considering. Who is he following? Uh, but 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 I I don't think he hasn't got anything to do with the teacher. It's like uh, he's been taught that this is the tradition. This is a tradition in the village, and he that, that's what he has to do. I think got anything to do with the teacher as far as I'm concerned. It's no, like but it it's got something to do with patriarchy, though, doesn't it? Well, yes. Because, mm -hmm. because what I'm saying is, if you. I think I think Ahmed's instinct is absolutely right that there is something that's be, there's a lot insinuated in the story, right? There's a lot of suggestion. So if we just go under the surface a little bit and we think, by the way, again, this is my interpretation. You don't have to agree with me, <laughs> but we think <laughs> Bobby is following Baxter, and Baxter is following Mr. Martin, and Mr. Mm -hmm. Martin is following the tradition that it is a patriarchal society, and who gets stoned? The woman gets stoned. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, the, the problem. <laughs> that wo that woman, she was eager to uh, to come to the lottery when she yes, said, "Yeah, mm. yeah." Uh, like uh, she said something. Do you want me to leave my my dishes in the sink? Yeah. Or like that, mm. yeah. that means she. I mean, although she is an elderly, probably or an old woman, she tried her best to join this. Yeah. Lottery. Oh, but that's right. She was. She wanted to go. That's she, for sure. she was the straggler, right? She was the mm. one who forgot the day. Mm. Wasn't I she? think, yeah. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're yeah. right. And then she saw the, the kids that would, had disappeared, and then she thought about it. She had second so, thoughts, and that's what she realized was the day. Yeah, I think she she, uh, she was late. Yeah, just uh, she didn't she forget what what the day today. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
after she, she was led, uh, but he succeeded in, in joining the event. But in the end, she, it turned out that she was a uh, chosen winner. <laughs> <laughs> she was the one stone to death. <laughs> so if you think about it, that that's a very sophisticated... Uh, <laughs> it's very, uh, his behavior, her behavior is very interesting. I think, firstly, she's very, um, very how to say, very um, cheerful, uh, cheerful, and how to say, she's happy. very, she's very happy. happy. He, she looks happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like she enjoys the event. Yeah, mm -hmm. although, although he, he was late, I was late. Yes, he's very cheerful and um, he's powerful. <laughs> woman. And then she, she changes, uh, so, though. Yeah, she changes. Change. Uh, as the story goes, yes, yes as the story goes, she, he, her, he, her um, attitude to the event has been changed, yeah? He, he suddenly say, uh, cried that it is not um, it is unfair, yeah? <laughs> and she tried to convince uh, uh, every uh, village of uh, the unfairness of this event. But uh, this uh, rotary, uh, how, to rot how to do rotary, but no one, <laughs> already no one here, no one want to listen to her. Yes, I, I can think of three ironic three ironic points about Tessie being chosen. Three, three different things. First, first, she's a woman and would they have killed a child? I mean, so there's that, but three yes, points as long, first. As long as they are over 16, they are allowed to, st to be stoned to death. Ah, okay, right, right. Oh. So that was one point that why, uh, who is fair game? The second point, so I think it's kind of ironic that the, but I'm saying, think about the structure of the story. It's not the women who are choosing, it's the men. So I think that's significant. Uh, the second ironic point is, they said earlier in the story, oh, I thought we were going to have this without you, Tessie, and she laughs it off. Well, there, <laughs> is, there is someone they had the lottery without, remember? There's the guy who broke his leg. Yeah. I ah, I yes. mm -hmm. Instead well, of him, uh, maybe mother, mother, yeah, yeah, mother, yeah, so uh, draw, mother was drawing. Yeah. Right. Someone had to stand no, in kidding. for him. Yes. Yes. So that means if she had slept through the lottery and they called her name, would they have to draw again? <laughs> so it's, 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 I mean, what would happen? But and I think I, they made sure that everybody was there before. Because oh. they, it's like they were calling everybody. It's an, I mean, are we all here together? It's like n nobody said that uh, we're missing Tessie or something. Right, like they, right. They, they, before the draw, they made sure that everybody was there. Mm. And I've got one more ironic point. Uh, tell me if you agree. I think it's also ironic that it seems that she's saying it's not fair, mm. but ironically, well, there's the big picture. Nothing is fair here. Yes, nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing is fair. Yes, it, it's all the fair. Yeah. Uh, so, the insist of uh, this uh, woman, uh, Ham 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 Hutchinson. Sorry. Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Uh, it, it, it that uh, uh, we have enough time uh, has been gi given to to draw a lottery, but it is. Uh, it is not so. It is not logical <laughs> excuse. So it's just. A, it sounds just an excuse. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's I just hopeless. Hopeless it, it, excuse. But I, I think that the the most ironic thing is that she doesn't say. This is the amazing thing about the story. The fact that it's not fair is totally left out of the story for mm -hmm. us to decide. What she objects to is the procedure. She thinks mm. the procedure is not fair. Yeah. Not the fact that yeah. they're going to kill someone for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, she doesn't deny the ceremony itself. Right. Yes. So it seems like uh, everyone, all all village people, agreed with with such a custom. Uh, it, it's very 
awful, it, it's a very cruel custom, a cruel habit, custom of villagers, but no one... <laughs> and and not, just this, not just this village, remember, it's described that yes, all uh, villages... Yes, in, in, the first, in the beginning of this story, it is written that not, not, it seems that not only this village, uh, and the, even even big city, even quite big city, in the big city, uh, such a habit, such a custom has uh, take place every year. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Does this? Here's my second question for you. This is not on the discussion list, but I'm just going to ask it. Um, the fact that she objects to the ritual and not to the fairness in general. I mean, what? What parallel should we draw to that? What similarities do you think that we're supposed to be thinking of? Remember, this was published in, I think I said 1948, if I remember mm. right. Yeah, something like that. Mm. Uh, I read a little bit of the background. Let me just see if I have the notes here. The lottery caused major controversy when it was first published June 26, 1948 in the issue of The New Yorker. That was the same year that George Orwell yes, published. I, I read, I read the, by the way. Yes, Wikipedia uh, about it, um, and after after um, releasing this story in in New Yorker, uh, there are many letters come to after. But uh, after uh, Sherry, uh, um, Sherry Adam ja Jackson. Sherry, Terry Jackson uh, denied to have an interview. Oh, but really? after after he after her death, her, her husband uh, ha, ha, uh, give, gave a comment that that this story is kind of uh, based on the real um, how to say I, I I don't remember. But, uh, based, based on but, something in her life or. Based, but based on uh, social, uh, it, it's social, kind of, uh, social mores. Social problem, say. yes, yes, it yeah. might happen in, for everyone. Such a, it symbolizes the um, our society. Well, Carmen, let me ask you this particular question: Do you think we're supposed to draw a parallel between the recent events of World War II, which ended three years earlier? and anything in this story. Do you think that there's a reason that it was written at that time? Uh, Remember, I think it was, yeah, you were saying that it was uh, published at the same time as your show was in uh, 1984? 1984. Yep, yeah, okay. 1984 was written. All he did was reverse the 4 and the 8 to come mm -hmm. up with the title. That's it. And he, oh, I didn't know that. So it went the other way around? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he, he published 1984 to in the introduction he said that he was commenting not on so much on totalitarian societies not on nazism he was commenting on literary censorship in england he was commenting on the kind of uh whatever you want to call it the kind of um, lack of freedom that he was experiencing in his own country he wasn't commenting only on what was happening or what they had just been through mm -hmm. so um, well, I'm just, anyway, we don't have to compare him to Orwell. I'm just pointing out that the date is significant. Uh, 1940 is a significant date. Yeah, it's the same date. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we're meant to reflect on the war in any way in this story? Well, that was um, 1984 and uh, I, I said 44, uh, 48 and the, and, the, and the war ended in 1945. Yeah. Now perhaps it's got something to do with it. Uh, for for instance, she the, the writer wants to show the um, when he thinks about traditions that uh, people uh, how I mean she re rejects those traditions because she thinks that people has to get over that. Mm, and you know it's, it's like it's like uh, she thinks because everybody when the, as Juki said before when it was published, there were a lot of uh, a lot of calls to the to the. Um, to the people saying that that, that was completely outrageous, uh, you know that, that that was completely um, they were shocked 
to the ending of this uh, of this story. And, and I think be shocked though. What they had just lived through was so much more shocking. What could be shocking because about you're, this? Because you're because <laughs> you're following the tradition. I think it was. The, the reason for that it was they wanted to, to, to make sure they want to ensure the harvest. So it was like a um, say again? What was they go back, say that they, again? They wanted to ensure they wanted to make sure the harvest in that in that uh, year was going to be good. What you know, the harvest? Did they say that in the story? Yeah, yeah but I read it, yeah, yeah, I read it. Readers cancelled those subscriptions and sent hate mail throughout the summer. After, after releasing the story yeah, in New York. So people have shocked and some people have hated this story and very angry, get me very angry. I, but it seems to for me that, it seems to me that uh, I understand why people so has, has uh, received a shock. Uh, why why people, story. wait, why people, why people were, were so shocked. Were uh, so shocked. Why I kind of understand uh, why people was so shocked. Uh, because uh, when when I read this story, uh, it seems to me that it 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 takes place uh, really. Uh, it's a kind of real story. Yeah, it's, it's every, very realistic. Yeah, realistic. It is written very realistically. So and. Detail is very um, uh, very similar to the real story. Uh, it yes, it uh, even it it uh, sounds funny <laughs> because uh, it is quite uh, realistic, too realistic. So, uh, but, but so just, just one thing: what we just talking just about when you say it was uh, like a ritual, they were just doing it to to ensure the harvest. You got you skim through the text and you'll see it says. Lottery mm -hmm. in June, corn be heavy soon. Oh, wait a second. That I missed that. Hold on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it was hold the on. old man who said it. That who said. Oh, that. look at this. Look at that. You're right. Hey, that's mm. interesting. Hold on. That changes everything. There used to be a saying about about lot oh this is old man Warner talking mm -hmm. right I was doing my funny voice that's why I, I missed this <laughs> used to be a saying about the lottery in June corn be heavy soon mm -hmm. oh how interesting first thing you know we'll all be eating chew, stewed chickweed and acorns there's always been a lottery so that means they're doing the lottery for the purpose to have the harvest that's it Oh. Very interesting. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, it, it will be good harvest there after, after such a Ooh. event. Yeah, there's a, there's a reason for the stoning. Mm. Um, so, it, uh, so here also it is written that it, it ritual, yeah? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, ritual means, ritual have a, such a uh, uh, meaning, yeah? Well, yeah. Let, let's... Means, let's uh, let me just share one thing with you really quick because Carmen that was an incredibly good find uh, I want to share a picture with you take a look at this picture hang on just a second uh, can you see this on your screen yeah look yes. familiar look familiar or not no. no not to me well a lot of this guy's paintings are much more abstract because he's kind of in the symbolist school from the 19th century. So I think this is Turner. And the name of the painting is The Golden Bow. The Golden Bow. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar yet? No. no. Oh, good. So we're going to learn something then. <laughs> uh, because this was a, a big topic of discussion uh, when I used to do uh, a bit of art because this comes up a lot. So, Turner's painting The Golden Bow, uh, Incident at the Aenid. So this comes directly out of Greek mythology. But that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a very influential book. Uh, I'm just going to read you a little, a little description. So, this is important because of modernism. And modernism was in full swing in 1948. In fact, arguably, it was passing to a new phase arguably after the war. The Golden Bow attempts to define 
the sacred elements of religious belief to scientific thought discussing fertility rights this is sorry this is the, the book I'm describing the picture is just a painting uh, because it's it's of the same it's depicting the scene that the book is based on but the book is a uh, literary criticism book by James Frazier uh, Golden Bow a study in comparative religion or Golden Bow a study in magic and religion by James Frazier uh, it was published, I'm just reading from Wikipedia, it was published in two volumes in 1890, three volumes in 1900. So this was kind of a favorite of the modernists, of the modernists like, um, well, pretty much like, you know, T.S. Eliot and Gertrude Stein and the whole school of modernism, the early modernists. Um, so, but let me go down As I remember, modernism is uh, uh, a field of... Uh, Mm, it's a mm, yeah, uh, it's a art and um, uh, how to say it a, it a field uh, which uh, which which denied the uh, traditional uh, way and 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 um, try to go to the future and I think should try we to, should we form a, try to find a modern form absolutely. Try to find and a modern and form. And surrealism a is one of the uh, modernism. Yeah. Um, humanism. Sorry, humanism. Yes. I mean the surrealism. Uh, surrealism. Like, sorry. Sorry. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Like Dali. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, um, modernism Picasso, is Picasso. Uh, absolutely. Uh, yes. These are these Dali. are. Picasso. Mm -hmm. In painting, sure. Yes. But they owe a lot to this one particular text. So that's why I'm going to bring it up because of what Carmen said about the harvest. So let me just read this little description. The Golden Bow attempts to define the sacred elements of religious belief to scientific th uh, thought, discusses fertility rights, human sacrifice, the dying god, the scapegoat. Oh, this should sound familiar. This story is about a scapegoat, and many other symbols and practices whose influence has extended into the 20th century. Its thesis is that old religions were fertility cults that revolved around the worship and periodic sacrifice of a sacred king. Mm -hmm. Fraser proposed that mankind progresses from magic through religion to scientific thought, that there is a teleology, that we progress as we mature to, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a species. This thesis was developed in relation to Turner's painting that you just saw, The Golden Bow, a sacred grove, grove of trees, where a certain tree grew day and night. It was a transfigured landscape in a dreamlike vision of the woodland lake of Nemi, Diana's mirror, where religious ceremonies and the fulfillment of vows of priests were held. Uh, finally, at the end here it says, the king was the incarnation of a dying and revolving god, a solar deity who underwent a mystic marriage to a goddess of the earth. So this is like a fertility ritual that got buried in the culture. It comes out in more abstract forms as, as time progresses, I guess. That's one way to look at it. The king, or this symbolic king, died at the harvest and was reincarnated in the spring. Fraser claims that this legend of rebirth is central to almost all of the world's mythologies. Uh, I just want to point that out because I totally missed the part about the harvest. <laughs> and, and no one, what a fascinating idea. No one can remember why they're doing the ritual except the reader of the story. We're the only ones who might have a clue as to why they're doing it, right? In fact, only one person has a vague memory. That's Old Man Warner. Mm -hmm. He says, yes. oh, they used to be the same. It's 77 years old. No? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 70 yes. something. Yes. yes. So it seems hardly a coincidence. <laughs> it just seems hardly a coincidence uh, that, that this is a theme in the story. Uh, does that make sense? I, I I know I'm 
I'm just quoting directly from Wikipedia. I know you, it's a little maybe hard to follow. Um, specifically, the, the, the one thing that stands out is the idea of the scapegoat. So, um, hang on a second. The scapegoat derives from the common English translation of the Hebrew, Azizel, which occurs in Leviticus. So I'm just reading again directly from, from Wikipedia. In ancient Greek, a cripple or a beggar or an animal was cast out of the community, either in response to a natural disaster like a plague or in response mm. to a calendrical crisis, a crisis of the calendar. In the Bible, the goat for uh, Azazel or Azizel was, was a goat that was designated to be outcast in the desert as part of the ceremonies for the Day of Atonement. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, give, give me a, a, a link. Sure, sure. It's just... Uh, and just, if, you, if you think about it, for instance, in Spain, we still got these uh, villages, the old villages, that uh, most of the people, they... they um, they uh, what they do. The job is uh, in, it's um, it's tend the land. I mean, they like an agriculture or something. Mm -hmm. So what they do, for instance, rain is very important here mm -hmm. because because uh, if because Spain is a desert. <laughs> so, uh, sort of. So meaning that uh, if we haven't got enough rain, we're gonna have any harvest at all. So what they do, for instance, when when we've got um, a very dry winter, what they do is they. They go to church. They take the saint, the saint out of the church. They they start just to to give him a, a walk, like a, a procession. Yeah, like a procession because they say this way, um, it's going to it's going to rain, and the harvest will be saved. You know, it's it's like in like like a a ritual, like a, an ancient tradition, and this is still and I can see the same thing here in the in the story, you know. Well, if if this is if, if the ritual the biblical ritual of the scapegoat was to atone for sin because if you didn't atone right there would be no spring <laughs> you would just mm -hmm. stay in winter mm -hmm. well what are those people atoning for if that's true if that's the logic if that's part of the logic of the story what do you think these people are atoning for are they atoning for anything because they don't remember why they're doing it Ahmed, you've got to chime in here. What do you think they're ton atoning for? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they're atoning for anything? I don't know, but uh, you know, because I was thinking of uh, the lottery itself. Right. I mean, uh, probably people might uh, join or try to. Uh, I mean, uh, they think that they they want to win, but the but uh, the reality is not. They are damaging their themselves, you know. Right. Yeah, that just uh, I was thinking of the ending of the story. Nothing else. <laughs> that just come to mind. So, um, do they really want to win, though? So you're saying that it seems like they want. Am I under, do I understand you correctly? It seems that they want to win, but in fact, or 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 you're saying that they want to hold the lottery because it sounds like to me in the story. Everyone kind of wants it to get over, to, to to get it over with as quickly as possible. Mm. Go back yeah. to have lunch. Yeah, get, well, we can get uh, this over with quickly and go back to have lunch. After, <laughs> after we kill some, we're uh, just going to go have lunch. In, so. in many areas, uh, in Bide, uh, rich people have uh, some kind of uh, ha, mm, have a common sense that, that they they live under the uh, under the goat, and sometimes goat uh, make make a punishment, and we ha we have to atone uh, to give give a, give a, give a goat uh, scapegoat. So mm -hmm. in Japan before uh, in a long time ago in the time of samurai uh, in uh, you know, in uh, Japan, Japan is a, uh, Japan was a country of agriculture, and uh, every every village have to have have to um, have to raise uh, rice. Yeah, a part of rice is uh, given to the government as a tax. Yeah, right. But so so to villagers are. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, 
if they are they are would be a uh, drought, uh, it it drought means a uh, death of of the village. So so I heard I, I read that that there is, uh, in in many villages uh, there is a custom that uh, every year uh, they found a young girl uh, to. Uh, she 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 was a uh, she she was uh, designated uh, to be a uh, victim, and she um, she was sacrificed. She, uh, she sacrificed. She have to sacrifice for for the villagers for for the village. She went into the uh, mountain alone without uh, food, and she and she will die. Uh, and and instead of she, her die, uh, um, village ha have a, have a good good harvest. Such a there is such a custom before. So that was and that, my, the age of the samurai was what the the eighteenth century or, or earlier. Uh, it it uh, um, uh, it uh, seventy and eighteen. Century, century okay. even 19th century. Uh, you know, 250 years, uh, Japan was a closed country. There was no contact with uh, other world. Uh, so such a such a uh, special habit have been formed in inside Japan. But such a custom now, now there is there is such a custom ha, now disap disappeared. But my wife told me that that in in some areas in Africa there is such a habit uh, custom that that uh, every year a young man uh, has been selected as a victim, uh, and he he have to die. Uh, but he felt it it very um, honor. To die for for the village, Jeez. so yes, such a custom <laughs> still still uh, still exist in nowadays. Mm -hmm. So I find it completely normal. I mean, I mean, if you <laughs> yes, if, no, I think it's shocked for you. If, I mean, if you come here to Spain, we've got this uh, Asian tradition uh, that's got stuck in the in the past, uh, and that we still got them. I just a piece, uh, I, I don't know if you can see it. What we do, our government, every single Easter, we, we uh, what they do is a reprieve for 21 um, uh, persons who were in jail, you know. Mm -hmm. I would say it was... A pardon, like a, a pardon. That's it, just for right. Easter, you know. And every single year is the same. People object to that. Some people think that uh, that should be stopped. And uh, but every year we do it. Well, and and, and did, what about what about bullfighting? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is, I mean, is that yeah, part of is that related? I mean, sacrificing animals. You know, here in Portugal, they always say, "Well, we don't kill the bull," but mm -hmm. they you do. do. They you do, do it, it, but you yeah, but you don't kill you, it. No, no, they do. They just don't do it in the ring. They still mm -hmm. kill it. Uh, and even if they didn't kill it, they're still butchering it in front of people. That's so it. I don't, see, I don't see how it's any better. And no, no, no. For me, I'm completely against that bull fighting. Uh, but I completely against these uh, re re reprieve things they do for Easter. Mm -hmm. You know, for so, me, it's completely. So I mean, it's do like you think the, so? Do you agree with James Fraser that this is kind of a goes all the way back? <laughs> to because his thesis is that this goes back to the ancient fertility cults like Dionysus and things like that mm -hmm. and that they're related to that I mean for me I mean, what the writer wants to wants to to do is to, um, just to to let everybody know that in the, the uh, traditions Asian traditions um, should be stopped because hasn't got anything to do with uh, with uh, how things are nowadays but uh, even though you know, we're talking about Back in 1988, uh, 48, mm -hmm. and what I just wrote is happening today in Spain. You know? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you see the relation. I mean, it's like we are go back to the past, and we got these rituals, we got these traditions, and we got we've got to get rid of it as far as I'm concerned. Well, we're very lucky today because we have someone who can comment on two different cultures. Our esteemed colleague, Mr. Ahmed who can talk not only about Saudi Arabia, but he can talk about Thailand, too. 
<laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay, not really. Yeah, but I don't probably I can talk. Uh, Ah. Uh, I love because yeah, because I'm from south, uh, near to Malaysia more. Malaysia, uh, so, ah, Thailand. Yeah, 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 uh, close to Malaysia more, and uh, probably I've been there just twice, something like that, just in my whole life, you know. Ah. Yeah, that's why, and uh, something else uh, because my dad um, passed away the time I was a child, so I <laughs> I don't have reference. I mean, someone I can ask about really. Well, yeah. we've, we've talked about Japan, we've talked about Spain. <laughs> do you, do, does this story have any resonance with you from, uh, from your culture, where you grew up? Well, uh, okay, uh, ab uh, about uh, the Thai ritual, I have no clue. Right. Yeah, but uh, probably in Saudi Arabia, uh, no, there is nothing about killing and, uh, <laughs> uh, for example, offer someone as sacrifice, really. Um, Probably, Cause, yeah. Because, I mean, I relate, as an American, I relate to the story very much because, for me, it's this, it's like, what resonates for me is the kind of jingoism that maybe it's not as strong, I mean, it's what I remember when I was growing up, this absolute undying faith in the American flag and uh, not allowed to question anything, and it's what I remember the most when I was young. And I and I didn't understand it then. Yeah. I didn't I didn't understand uh, when I was twelve. Uh, I refused to pledge allegiance to the flag. Every morning we have to wake up, go to school, six thirty a.m. Put our hands over our hearts and recite this prayer. And it's a prayer, like a, like a religious prayer, just about. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And 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 I refused to do it when I was twelve. Uh, I was no longer in school by the time I was 13. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's a direct result of refusing to say the Pledge of Allegiance, but that was one of the things which might have contributed to not being... Uh, I, I, I kind of stopped doing all those things. Because I didn't understand so, why, why were we doing this without talking about it, without thinking about it. I didn't know what it meant, basically. So that, that's why I'm saying... I'm not saying... Ahmed, that you have to relate to the idea of <laughs> killing or public stoning at all. <laughs> what I mean is, for me, the resonance is this idea of a kind of unthinking adherence to not just ritual, but in this case, it's a kind of patriotism. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, so I'm just curious, does the story resonate with you in any way? Uh, well, um, probably there is something. I mean, uh, um, I think not just probably in say in Arab communities or something, uh, I think it is um, all over the world. I mean, there is something probably, or not something, a lot of things we do in our lives. Uh, we don't ask about it. Uh, probably this is uh, the way uh, of upbringing, probably. Taking things for granted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and pro um, I mean, probably we will be lucky enough if we start to ask about these things uh, when we are 10 or 12 or 15, it is fine. Because after that, I think after 20, you will not, uh, you will not ask about it. You will start uh, probably uh, to, I mean, if you uh, get married and you have uh, your family, you might uh, start to teach the same traditions <laughs> to your children. That's the problem. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. because you are already influenced uh, or impacted by your parents, by your uh, community, people around. So I did the right thing by getting kicked <laughs> out of school, basically, is what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay, good, good. <laughs> I think so, too, but it certainly had, had a... Well, not the best way to yeah, but be, being rebel isn't that good, really. <laughs> you know? Well, I think I, 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 I want to just get back to one point about this. Uh, if we follow the logic of the, of the golden bow, golden bow, sorry, um, if we follow the logic, this or the scapegoat logic, that there's some atonement, I just can't get it out of my head that there must be something that they're atoning for, whether they know it or not, whether they realize it or not, whether they remember it or not. And I, 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 and I wonder what it is. Well, I can't help but think about the year that it was published. And I remember a story. You know, I'm not from Europe, but I've been living here for quite a while. I remember a story someone told me about 
uh, growing up in, uh, I guess it was Belgium or something like that, and uh, and someone was t this is a long long time ago, and he was talking about someone I knew was talking about their, I guess grandparents or something, and saying that the amazing thing if you if you look at history if you talk to people who lived through the war was that they knew what was going on in those areas uh, everyone knew that there was a a, a, a strange factory uh, in the neighboring farm with smoke coming out but no mm -hmm. one would talk about it mm -hmm. and and as an American it's a kind of tab taboo exactly yeah and the reason I bring that out I bring that up is because as an American we have a much more abstract concept of the war because it's it's hard to comprehend how small the world is until you go there so you know uh, you know like you know the, the distance between New York to Chicago is probably the same as Paris to you know I don't know Tel Aviv or something you know I don't know and what I'm saying is it, it, it's something that's hard to imagine until you're actually here and you see it with your own eyes it's much more abstract mm -hmm. is is what they're atoning for something is what they're atoning for related to that in some way that they are passively participating in something that has serious consequences mm -hmm. uh, is this is this a symbolic is this, a, is this an allegory? Is, is her story yeah. allegorical? Yeah, well, just what, what, you, what you said the first time. I think you were telling something like, uh, when I said she was stoned to death and that she was shocked. You say you were shocked. It was just three years later, there the World War II. And if you think about it, just think about what you just said, about those uh, fumes coming from a certain factory. You know, and we were just shocked because someone was stunned to death. And what about all the people that were that were they, um, burned alive? Well, at, at, at the time, mm -hmm. people said they didn't know about it, and that may be true. I don't know, but from what I've heard, well, I'm just saying it just reminds me of a story of someone who who was from the the area and was saying, and he guess was studying history or something. It was someone I met at the university, and he was saying. Well, let me tell you, people knew exactly what was going on. They just kept their mouths shut. They were afraid yeah. and they kept their mouths shut. But, but, but I, what I want to say is that um, uh, Americans they were really shocked when they read this story and they were just calling back saying oh, that uh, <laughs> the ending was completely shocked. They, the, the Europeans and weren't shocked. It was the Americans. That's it. Shocked. That's what right, that's, right. that's that's what I that were trying to say, you know. They were shocked by the by the story because someone was stoned to death. So what about all the people who were cremated, who were, were burned alive in those factories? Right? It's because perhaps you didn't have it at home. You heard yep. about it but you didn't see it. And you yep. didn't live with it. Yeah, but, as they say, out of sight, out of mind. That's it, absolutely. But what about all the people that came back? I, I guess the point is that America didn't really participate in World War I. Yeah, like, and the end of it. <laughs> yeah, so I guess they had, yeah, I guess maybe that's part of it. Yeah, that's a good point. Why were people, in, why was it such an uproar in 1948? Well, another thing that comes to mind is that a lot of the details of, of the Second World War hadn't fully come out yet. I know oh, yeah. I know for a fact that the bombs dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, according to the American sources, weren't lethal. But that's completely ridiculous. I mean, uh, there was no radiation. Uh, everything was fine in three days, and everything was. That's that's what they and were what saying. And what about the use? What about the use who were uh, what, who were afraid by the by the Americans when they went to the camps? They they told the story, and the factories were in there in the campus. You know, they were actually there when they lived. Oh, of course. You know? I'm and, saying not, not, they, not all of the details had probably come out by that point. Maybe people but they, were... But they could also, tell about them. I mean, they, they were living there, they survived the camp, and they told the people the world what was happening there. I mean, they were the survivors of that. It's not something that you hear, it's something that you live with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you make a very good point that it didn't hit home <laughs> the way it is when you're living there in the in 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 the place you know in, in these communities i think in another word uh, this is the problem of individual individual and community yeah uh, in every 
villages, in every country, in every area, every society, there is a rule, yeah? And there is a common sense. Um, uh, sometimes it, it's clearly, sometimes it is it's obscure, uh, some kind of common rule. And there is a taboo, as you mentioned, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, villagers, uh, which villagers cannot uh, break. Uh, so if you, oh, as uh, uh, um, our teacher John say, John maybe uh, you don't you don't want to swear an oath to the to the American flag, but if you uh, if you uh, while you are uh, follow to the rule, uh, you you are safety and you feel quite pleasant. You feel un unity to add that uh, with others to the society, to the village. So in this story, firstly, uh, I I I um, I would like to pay attention to the uh, relationship uh, among villagers in this story. You mm -hmm. know, uh, there are quite a um, warm. Warm relationship uh, is written, is described in this story. Yeah, uh, every um, everyone has a has a close relationship. But in another word, it means that if you have um, if you want to be alone, uh, villagers don't allow it. <laughs> it's better, it's better to be alone. You, you know, uh, this is uh, this main protagonist, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. ha Hampshire. <laughs> uh, Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Uh, uh, were late to the uh, late to the event, yeah. She, 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 she was, um, she, she said joke, but, but she, she is, uh, excused uh, for his, for her being late. And after that, after villagers understanding the reason of her, her rating, uh, they, they, um, they, they welcomed the ham, Hunting song, and uh, the, um, uh, some villagers admit that the one boy ha had been grown, yeah, and uh, warm atmosphere, yeah, in the, in the first uh, half of this story. Uh, it's because people, ha people, uh, people in the village feel unity in this village. But we, call, we call that a close knit community. Close -knit. yes, but it only if you uh, if you don't break the rule, yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If if you <laughs> and uh, and one, um, I think this this in this village there is no event. Yeah, it is quite life is quite dull. Yeah, so <laughs> for everyone to need need a such an event, yeah, very exciting <laughs> event, and uh, a victim is needed for for them, yeah, for not for entertaining, but for for living a usual life, usual that 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 life, yeah. Yes, 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 because it's related, you know, it's related to a harvest. They need someone to be stoned to death because he's the victim, and for that, when he's dead, the the harvest that year is going to be good, and yes, everybody in everybody is going to 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 be able to eat. But the harvest is going to be can, good. But the harvest we, here. Uh, sorry, just to, uh, let me say. Let me say. Uh, I, I we can we can recognize this story as uh, such a um, uh, harvest rule, yeah. But but I don't I don't I I think it it you recognize it uh, as a harv. The, um, for the harvest, they they are doing such a thing. I think it is not interesting to read this text. Uh, I think it is a not such a story, but uh, but a story about community and individual. So uh, so so. Uh, but 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 they are giving us. But they wait. giving a reason wait. for that. Of course, the other story it. about the victims wait. and the harvest. But listen to this. One, one last point here, because we have to stop soon. Listen, what if the harvest is 
a psychological, a spiritual harvest, not a physical harvest of crops. They need this death to put things in perspective for them. They need something like Yuki. What, what, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. And and what if they need to see, just like the same reason that, you know, the idea of catharsis, uh, you know, from Aristotle or whatever from the poetics, uh, you know. We need to go, why do we see theater? Why do we go to see films? Because we need to experience something to keep our lives in balance. Because if we didn't, we might not get, we might take out those pent up urges. You know, catharsis was supposed to release these pent up urges in you. We'd all be walking around being homicidal or whatever. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if the harvest is a harvest of emotion or a harvest of spirit that they need to go through to cleanse themselves so that they could go through another year and be a close-knit society? There's a, there's a theory for you. Because w when, when they say there, there are some, um, some other villages that uh, have excluded that, that they have stopped uh, doing the stoning, I was wondering why. You know? they, they said some of them had stopped? Yeah. I don't some remember. of the villages, yeah. yeah. Some of the village, someone because the old man said, "You know, I have heard in some villages the stony has been stopped. They are not oh, yeah. doing it anymore." Meaning Inter that. Pr mm -hmm. Interesting. It means that there's a glimmer of hope in the story, <laughs> <laughs> and it's ironic that it comes I from the old uh, man. I think the story of a victim and harvest is a subtext of this story, but but uh, uh, we have to pay attention to the fact that that uh, not every villagers in this village uh, are thinking about harvest. It, uh, um, killing, killing one person uh, selected well, by lot. It, none of them are thinking about the harvest. Right? Became, everyone, everyone has forgotten the idea. Yeah, they forgot, yes, they forgot about the harvest. harvest yeah? and, uh, and such a, big, such a victim's event uh, became a habit uh, for community. Yeah? So, uh, for community, for maintain community, uh, they need a victim. Yeah, uh, mm. it is no concern about the harvest. Victim is needed for this villagers, for this village to to maintain unity and the peace of this village. And such a story uh, take um, take happen might happen in every every society. Even the even in school, even in school, yeah. In the Japan, there is a big problem uh, about bullying someone, yeah. Uh, class classmate or all, all, all classmate bullying one person, yeah. One student, uh, a student sometimes uh, sometimes uh, suicide, yeah. Uh, so kills himself, yeah. So such a bullying is uh, maybe you can explain such a uh, big uh, uh, reason of such a bullying is maybe someone is wrong, yeah. Someone is good, someone is wrong. I, I think it is not. Uh, I think it a uh, society, some kind of society, closed society. Uh, to maintain a society, it it, it needs such a big victim. Yeah, I agree with that. But the thing is, um, if you go back to the text, you can see they say, uh, they do say, Mr. Adam said to the old man Warner, who, stood, who stood next to him, that over in the North Village, they're talking of giving up the lottery. The other one yeah, right, said, right. back of crazy fools. Some mm -hmm. places have already quit lotteries, Mr. Saddam said. Nothing but trouble in that. You know, there's some <laughs> other places that have quit this, uh, this uh, ritual. So perhaps yeah. exactly what you said. There's some hope in that. The witch wants to, to show some kind of mercy, some kind of hope in that. That uh, we've got to, to to give up old traditions or rituals and go yes. just see things different. On that note, I'm going to have to give up the tradition and ritual. Uh, I think uh, some people, short stories for today. some villagers <laughs> in this village have a suspicion about this ritual, but they are, at the same time they are afraid of stopping this mm -hmm. ritual. Yeah, I think it's because they want to maintain their society. Yeah, and because they want to to be together, to be close yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have to stop today's uh, ritual, sorry. unfortunately, <laughs> because we're over time. But uh, very very interesting, very good analysis, uh, and I'm glad you found that, Carmen, <laughs> because I, I that's you I, I, point. I, I, 
I wanted to I wanted to bring that up, but I I didn't even realize that that was mentioned in the story. And I remember reading that, and it just totally went in one ear and out the other. So, but I think because I got it very fresh because I just read it about uh, three hours ago, and you were just doing the classes, and that's different because that it's like I got all the information in just uh, some hours. You know, it just goes to show if we work together, if we work together as a community, <laughs> that's and it. We don't break the rules. <laughs> Yes. We stick we together. <laughs> exactly. If we, you don't order the villagers, <laughs> you will be killed. <laughs> well, wow. listen, really everyone. Like it. I, I've got to go. Um, if you, we uh, can talk uh, two or three hours about this team. Yes, yeah, <laughs> we could. Um, if you have a suggestion for a particular short story or an <clears throat> or anything like that, you can get in touch with me. Uh, we are no longer allowed to give out our email or personal contacts for some reason. That has changed. But don't forget, you can always contact uh, teachers through the messaging system at Verbling. Mm -hmm. Even if it says um, book a tutoring session, you're not, you, you, it, you, it, you, that's your choice. But that's how you uh, send messages. And I'm going to speak to them because right now it's, I think it's a bit confusing. Uh, so if just because you click message doesn't mean you're automatically bush booking a tutoring session. Okay. Uh, but send me suggestions if there's something in particular uh, you'd like to focus on. I don't remember what I had selected next, but uh, I'll let you know. I don't know. I'll, I'll make a post about it for those of you who are following me on other nameless social networks. So okay. I'll let you know. Okay? Uh, in the end of this, uh, this class, I'd like to uh, give you a uh, sub note. Uh, there is a, a mistake in your text, John. Yeah, there's a uh, lot of the typos, actually. Yes, I, I there is an end of second paragraph. Uh, there is the, the girls stood aside, talking among themselves, looking over their shoulders at the boys. Can you find? After that, uh, maybe rolled in. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, such I, I, I'll paste some some text has been uh, lost here. Oh yeah. The yes. girls stood aside, talking amongst the, among themselves, looking over their shoulders. Yes, at I rolled in the dust. I yes, yes, the yes. original text, and I and I found uh, some here. Uh, uh, um, at the boys and the very small children here. Uh, yeah, I see. Yes, there is no. So it is it was difficult to understand. The, the, the problem is that I I get the text and I have to reformat it to get it into the uh, the doc. So yes, it is surprising that in internet in some pages, uh, same uh, lost text has been pasted. So original uh, some original text in 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 the internet sites ha always always make mistakes. This this is from the New Yorker uh, and the New Yorker. Uh, changed for sometimes they made changes ah, like like with with Nabokov they actually changed the title of his story yes, yes, yes. and he was a bit upset so it could be anyway I will make changes okay I, it's a okay, I, just, I just want to thank all of you because I learned a lot today and I really enjoyed this class so thank you me uh, too thank you. <laughs> thank there'll you. be more there'll be others Okay, okay, thank you. Have a nice right. day all. See, see, bye thank bye. You, see you tomorrow, I hope. Bye. Bye. bye for now, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See you. See you.